Trinon, what the hell are you doing? This... This is not Brutal Legend. This is not Dark Souls. This is not an opinion video of a random video game. Hell, this is not even a video game. What the hell are you doing? Oh, well. About three years ago, I started buying board games with the ever-so-popular introduction game Settlers of Catan. And then, I kind of got deeper into the world of these designer board games, and with Puerto Rico, which is, yeah, a game. So, okay, board games. What, what, what's up with them? Why, why am I doing a video on them? Well, the reason is, like I said, back in... 2009, I got really started getting into them. Then I really started getting into them. And then I really, really started getting into them. Up until I, 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 I got this thing. This is Virgin Queen. What a wonderful name for a game. But no, it, it, it's not what you normally name a game called Virgin Queen. It is... It is a game about Queen Elizabeth I and the reign of her, in her reign in the Europe during that time, the wars of religion. As once said by a great board game review show, Shut Up and Sit Down, you can hire Shakespeare. Here, let me let me show you where you can do that. Okay, see this? This is the hiring artists. And if you notice, let me zoom in here. Entering in turn six is indeed Shakespeare. Although I prefer Marlowe, but hey, let's not be snobs. Okay, this still doesn't answer the question. Trinot, what the hell are you doing? What I'm doing is sharing the reason I've been so on hiatus. The reason that you haven't seen me do videos of Dark Souls, of Demon Souls, Hell, Brutal Legend, or even just a crappy opinion video with Microsoft Paint graphics. You're seeing how deep down a rabbit hole I've gone. So, tomorrow, I will invite friends over. Yes, I actually have friends, despite all appearances. And I will try to teach them this game and try to play this. Now, the thing is, once you get to a certain point, these games become more and more logistically the challenging to bring to the table. See, I think the number one reason I've heard people say they don't play board games is simply because they don't have the friends who would be interested in it. Like, they don't actually say, oh, board games are stupid, board games are boring. They say they don't have people who would be interested in it. If you think about that, though, all of these people are probably kind of video game players, and if you think about it, the jump from a video game to a board game, while not this board game, but maybe Settlers of Catan, would be not that much of a jump. Now, I'll take a brief aside and mention that when I mention board games, I'm talking about the recent decade or two of board games that came out. Uh, not not your standard Monopoly fare, but um, the designer board games called so because they actually have the designer's name on them. 
that that's something new that 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 really emerged i'd say around the mid 90s that really got popular here and uh in america so what you're seeing now is probably the most complicated game i have board game wise at least um to give you a sense of complexity this is made by the same designer of Civilization's Five expansion, Gods and Kings. And I'd say of the two, this one compares in complexity yet more so because unlike Civilization, you need to know the rules to this game before you play it. While the, while, uh, the advantage of the video game is that they can teach you the rules as you go along. So, what, what is going on here? What, so, okay, what you have is something truly amazing in game design. You have, now, think about video games for a second. Think about multiplayer video games. Think about how they're balanced. Usually you have equal sides, Maybe with different victory conditions, such as, cap such as uh, one person holds a fort, one person tries to attack it. Maybe you have different characters, like in fighting games, different characters. Um, usually you don't see overlap between the two. You don't see like uh, different characters trying to take a fort from another, like in a fighting game. Okay. And usually it's two teams that most video games are designed around. Maybe more. And if it and you know you don't see much in the way in video games about uh, asymmetrical play beyond that. Okay, here you have six players, each on their own team, each with their own very differently operating character characters, or in this case, national powers. You have the British in over here, or England rather, and they, um, they do things like try, uh, have Queen Elizabeth, the titular virgin queen, uh, shake off suitors and pirates the world map and pirates Spanish colonies. You have Spain, who is the superpower at this time, who both who not only has their regular country, but they also have taken over most of Italy, the Netherlands at this point. And they don't even have colonists. They just, because of the previous air generation, They've conquered so much that they um, are dominating the new world and having treasures constantly taken to them. You can see some treasures right here. They usually get lined up on these boxes sent to Spain, giving them extra maneuverability in the play. You have France, who is surrounded on all sides by threatening nations, but more importantly, and they are trying to diplomatically negotiate uh, their royals and try to marry them off. But you also have the uh, Holy Roman Empire doing kind of the same thing, but also hiring mercenaries to the highest bidder. And, um, and they will... They, they, they uh, will secretly choose a side in the religious struggles of the era, which also is factored into this game. You have the Ottoman Empire, not very diplomatic, but more trying to conquer slowly over the nations. And then you have a nation that's not even on the board yet. You have the Protestants, who, through religious rebellions, will take over the Netherlands and parts of France, the... Dutch and the Huguenots, respectively, and they will try and they will assert the status quo in these areas. Um, 
Now, this all sounds kind of now kind of boring and historical and all of that, maybe to some of you. Okay, well, think about this. You have six different players, six totally different functioning ways in a 1v1v1v1v1v1 free-for-all with alliances that can be made and broken wars that can be made all sorts of things going on now can you compare that at all to any video games out there I don't really think so I don't really think there's a game designed around such a symmetry and such imbalance to make a balance the closest I can think of is how you have the extremely different factions of StarCraft and even then those have very similar structures and victory conditions and asymmetry uh, the only asymmetrical fact they have is that their races have completely different unit structures, but not even then too much differences. Um, the only game I can really think of that had a nice asymmetrical twist uh, was Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow, in terms of video games at least. It had spies versus tanks, essentially. Spies versus security guards, and each of them operated differently and had different goals. That that's was really neat. And they had different playstyles, even. But, that aside, th this... Oh, th this is quite the game. Um, the thing is, it's also quite complicated. Here, I want to show you something. So, we will move down a bit. And I will show you first a scenario book. Okay, if you notice, this goes on to page 32. It's about, I want to say, yeah, 32 pages. Okay, that's a scenario book. Okay, well, that can mean anything. That can have lots of filler content, you know, like designer notes and historical in the historical um, recounting that this game is based off of, you know, it has 10 pages of that. That's, that's not necessary reading. Let, let me show you the necessary reading. This is the rule book. Oh god, she's ugly, but... Okay, how big is this? Goes on to 44 pages as you can see right there. Most of that is required reading. 44 pages of rules, tiny font, lots of dense legalese language, section 10.1, 10.2, such, such and such. Not as obfuscating, obviously, because they want you to understand what's going on, but certainly a challenging read. What does that mean? That means that you have to get to play this game, six people, to play a rather long game. This game can go on for seven hours for people who know what they're doing if you play the full campaign. And you have to teach them 44 pages of rules. That's quite a logistical challenge. And honestly, I'm kind of over, in, over my head here. But maybe that can explain a little bit as to why I am not uh, doing many videos on video games. Uh, I'm simply just caught up in this world of board games. This is one of many. Now, not, now this probably is the most complicated and demanding game I have. But there's so, so much out there. And it's so amazing that this design is not unique in board games in terms of how asymmetrical and how creative it can be. Video games all seem, not, not to sound like the broken record of the internet, but they tend to be ripping off one another so much that they don't know what they're ripping off and tend to be copycats. Now, that happens in board games too, but I'd say because 
you leave the creativity to one designer rather than a full team and you're not restricted, restricted by so many technological barriers, you get more, not innovation, but certainly more experimental designs. You get things like this uh, that would simply would not be feasible in video games. They require too many sales, too much technology, and how would you get six players to play a complicated, asymmetrical game like this on a video game terms? I wouldn't know. But somehow, this works with board games. And that, that's what amazes me, that I can get in a box, admittedly an expensive box, a game like no other with a terrible cover art and play it with friends. So, and that's another thing. Where have the games that you can play sitting down with friends gone? There's, there seems to be so little focus on local cooperative gaming and video games today. It's all online now. And that's okay, but at the same time, I think it restricts what you can do with a video game. And in doing such, you don't get stuff like this. Or even maybe 30 minute, hour long games that do lots of creative things. Um, so what's the point of this video? To answer the beginning question, what the hell are you doing, Trinon? I just wanted to show that if you're kind of tired of what the world of video games has to offer, kind of sick of seeing same old, same old, maybe, you know, with the occasional innovation, but it seems all samey, I have a recommendation. Not this game. My God, no. Um, because this is so this is something you go into after you've waited a few years in the deep end. No, you but look into maybe not Catan, but Puerto Rico. As dry of a game as that is, look into maybe some if you want some more flavor to your games, Chaos in the Old World. Look into these games and think about what they do differently than video games. Think about how that could apply to video games. Because I think there's a lot of learn room to learn here. There's a lot of room to learn here. And that's what I wanted to tell you today. I wanted to just make a message here that video gamers, those especially interested in design, Look around. Look around not just in video games, but elsewhere. Maybe the world of board games. Maybe elsewhere, too. And see just how different things can be with only a few contextual changes. From going from video to pen to paper, just how much changes. So, that's the video for today. Um, sorry for those expecting more Brutal Legend Let's Plays and all of that. I, I want to get back to that. I hopefully will. Not too soon, but yes. So that is that.